In this video, we will add color to shapes using Live Paint. You could select a shape made in Adobe Illustrator and then use the Fill and Stroke options to color it. However, notice that it also filled in the color of the circle and our roof is not a closed shape, therefore a fill color isn't going to work. Instead, we will use my favorite tool, the Live Paint Bucket Tool. For some reason, this tool reminds me of coloring in a coloring book. Once you start with this tool, it can be tricky to make changes to your original shapes. Make sure your shapes are drawn and placed exactly where you want them. First step, use your selection tool to select all of your objects that you want to paint. And then over in the toolbar, you'll find the Shape Builder tool. If your workspace is set up like mine, it's in the left column, the ninth icon from the top. The tool we want is actually nested with that Shape Builder tool. If you click and hold, the panel will pop up and then you can choose the Live Paint Bucket. For some of you, you will be able to just click on the selection to begin painting, but for others, you might get a pop-up. So I will show you a different way to activate your selection. Up in the menu bar, click Object, then go down to Live Paint and choose Make. And then you will be able to hover over the different shapes and see these thick red lines. This shows you what shape will get the color. Then you'll just click to drop that color and fill in the shape. You can go back up to the swatches panel by clicking this arrow under the fill and you can choose a different color for another part of your drawing. Be aware that the tiny arrow on the cursor is where the paint will drop, not the drips from the paint bucket. A faster way to change colors is to use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard. Above the cursor are three little squares that can be scrolled through, and then you can stop at the color you want in the middle square. It doesn't fill until you click. And then you just keep picking colors and scrolling through and picking colors, dropping them in to fill all of your shapes. That's my favorite part, and that's what reminds me of coloring in a coloring book. If you want to change the stroke color or the outlines around the shapes, hit the return or enter key on your keyboard to bring up the Live Paint Bucket Options panel. Within this dialog box, make sure that Paint Strokes is checked, and then click OK. Now, when you hover the cursor close to a stroke, your icon is going to change from the paint bucket to a paint brush. That lets you know that you'll be coloring the stroke when clicked. So you can go up to the stroke panel and click the drop down arrow to bring up your swatches. Click on a different color and then get the paint brush to click and change the color of those strokes. Because the highlight color is green on this layer, all my strokes appear to be green, but if I click in the negative space in the artboard with the selection tool and nothing is selected, I can see the true color of the strokes. But I'm going to edit undo to get rid of those fuchsia stroke colors. We'll talk more about color in a moment, but before we do, let's go over a few problem solving situations. You may have noticed a gap between the back line and the triangle, meaning that this section of the roof is not a closed shape. That means that I won't be able to fill it in and I can't use my selection tool with Live Paint Bucket to close it. I can use my shaper tool to adjust the line and drag its end to close the gap, but I will demonstrate another option that will catch any additional gaps I might have in my drawing that I didn't notice. So I want to have that object selected, go up to Object, Live Paint, and we're going to choose Gap Options. In this dialog box, I can see that there are actually 13 gaps. With preview checked, I can see them indicated in light red on my drawing. Luckily, Live Paint Bucket was automatically ignoring some small gaps or I wouldn't have been able to color anything in. If this gap on the roof wasn't being identified in red, I could choose a medium or large indication of gaps, but you can see it's also marking gaps between the chimney and the roof line. So you could close these by hand, but instead I'm going to have Illustrator close all the gaps for me and say yes. 
Illustrator is closing those gaps with transparent lines. But now if I go to Live Paint Bucket, I can fill in the roof. Sometimes the way Illustrator closes the gaps is not quite what I want. You can see an angle here. So I'll still have to use the selection tool to adjust that myself. But either way, it's a good habit to do this step first so that all your gaps will be taken care of before you paint. Now, what if you wanna change something back to the way you had it a while ago? Let's say I wanna change that yellow triangle back to the blue color I had at the start. I could edit undo and undo and undo and undo, but that's not gonna work. And unlike Photoshop, Illustrator does not have a history panel. So unfortunately, the only way to make a change is to redo that object. So going back and choosing that blue color that I had at the beginning is the only way that I can make that update. And as I continue recoloring some of these objects, I want you to notice here that the roof has been split into two and that's because I used those gap options and they were on a large size, so it has cut it into half. Now you may notice that I have in my swatches panel a lot more folders and different colors than you might have on yours. I promised we'd come back and talk more about color. So I created these folders by playing around with the different colors before we began. Specifically, my goal was to make tints and shades, that is different values of colors, to make my drawing look a bit more three-dimensional as it is reflecting a light source, having different parts lighter and different parts shaded. So I'll show you how I was able to make the different values of colors and how I added these folders to my swatches. We're just worried about fill right now. You don't need to worry about stroke. So I'm going to pick this tan color, not the most exciting color, but I do need it for my chimney and I think it matches the pastel elements of this house. So make sure that you have selected whatever color you want to change and then come down to this plus sign to click and make a new swatch. In this panel, we've got our color mode, but if you hit the drop down and switch to HSB, that stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. And then I can change value by bringing up or down the brightness for that original color. I'll bring it down to start with a shade and then click OK, and you can see that that new color has been added next to the original in my swatches. I'll click on that original color again, and then go down to the plus sign for a new swatch, change our color mode to HSB, and I'm gonna bring up the brightness to make a tint or a lighter shade of that original. Now I have all three of them here. I'd like to put them in their own folder. I'll come down to this folder icon, to create a new color group. I can name it if I want to, click OK. And then you just click and drag those colors down into that folder. And I usually put them in order of light to dark or dark to light. Now I can choose my live paint bucket and shade in those colors on my chimney. I'd like to have the light color come on top as though the light source is above, and then the medium on the side, and then the dark color closest to us. And I think that helps it look very three-dimensional. And as I finish coloring in the rest of these shapes, I have one last problem solving scenario for us. Let's say you have finished coloring everything and then you decide, oh, I would like to lift up this tree a little bit. But as you can see, I'm moving the entire drawing instead. A lot of designers forget this step. So when you are finished with live paint, you need to make sure everything is selected. Go up to object, then to live paint, but be warned, you do not want to select release. Release will clear all of the colors you've already added, which can be helpful if you want to start over, but instead you want expand. And that will change our live paint object into one or more groups. However, when I try to move in now, everything is still grouped together, and that is not what I want. So the final step, you have to go to Object and Ungroup. Depending on how many objects you have as part of your Live Paint selection, you might have to ungroup multiple times. 
You could just keep going up to object ungroup until ungroup is grayed out, but if you do too much, you might separate out the fill color from the stroke, which is also not ideal. But if this happens, I can put the fill and stroke back together, and then I can use my selection tool to select the whole tree. There is a shortcut. I can right click and find the group option. And now that tree is grouped together as one and I can move it as one. If I ungroup the tree, I just need to know that I, the fill and stroke need to be treated as separate objects. And excellent, our final step is going to be save. I'll go up to file, save as, and I always save this work to a class folder on my creative cloud. And I title it using my first name, last initial underscore, and then what this project is. This is our unit 01.3 live paint bucket and click save. Okay, and that is how you use live paint bucket to color in shapes in Illustrator.